Hey, fellas. So, um, thankfully there's still a lot of charge left in the battery in this thing. I haven't found the charger yet. I mean, I'm, I'm looking around and I, I can't find it in any place it could conceivably be. I've even checked a few places where it conceivably shouldn't be. I think the only place I haven't looked for it yet is the car. <sighs> yeah. So, yeah, this is... The, the, the lack of the charger is driving me a little nuts. Just, just a little. <sighs> I'll have to remember to check the car for it next time I go out. I don't know why it would be there, but, it, you know, it, it's something, right? Okay, so, two drafts this past Friday. And, um, this deck right here. This deck did alright. Um, came in second place with it. Um, yeah, I've got uh, best two out of three in round one, swept my round two opponent, best two out of three in round three, and it just wasn't good enough to get me into first place. It, it happens. But, um, just go over what I've uh, got here. It's, it, it's, a, it's a pretty standard um, blue-white draft build. No big, no, nothing, nothing really uh, surprising or too exciting here, you know. Uh, Tree Wolf Blazing Torches, which was a nice thing to get, mind you. Uh, claustrophobia, a Smite the Monsters, a Rebuke, a uh, Feelings of Dread, which is a card that I think a lot of people undervalue, but that's just me, I don't know. Fiend Hunter, he's always nice. A Mausoleum Guard and a Doom Traveler, both nice cards. Uh, a pair of Deranged Hermits. Um, Traveler's Amulet, there's a Mana Fixing there. Uh, Forbidden Alchemy, it's alright. Lantern Spirit, I'm a big proponent of that guy. Two Delvers of Secrets, always nice. Uh, Battleground Geist, reasonably solid. Helps out the Lantern Spirit and any uh, Spirit Tokens I get off of these. And Abbey Griffin, Chapel Geist. Demon Mail Hawbrook, goes really nice with these guys here who are basically just Sacrifice Fodder. Uh, Inquisitor's Flail, Mask of Avacyn. I really like the Mask of Avacyn, as some of you have probably watched a bunch of my videos can tell. I go after it when I can because it basically sits there and says your creature can't be hit with removal. That's that's a pretty strong thing right there, especially if you throw that on a flyer. Oh yeah. Heavens forbid if you have a Delver of Seeker who's transformed into a 3-2 flyer, throw the Mask of Avacyn on him. He's now a 4-3-4-4 uh, four, four, four flyer. Hexproof. That's, that's pretty boss. That's pretty boss. Um, Traveler's Amulet, I mentioned all that. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, what you're not seeing in here is a Champion of the Parish, um, which is one of the reasons why I decided to run these two guys. <coughs> um, I'll be perfectly blunt. The uh, Champion of the Parish never worked out well. I haven't had good experiences with him. Maybe other people have. I don't know. I can't vouch for that. But like I said, you know, the deck took me to second place. I did well with it. Uh, I kicked the Champion of the Parish into the prize pool. I also had a Splinter Fright in my sideboard. Uh, my Keeper ended up being a uh, Woodland Cemetery. Which is not a bad card at all. Um, hold on a second while well, yeah. I get these put off to the side. Not that it really matters. I mean, these are all cards that I've got oodles upon oodles of. And most of them are commons. I mean, the, uh... Fudget Snuts. The, um... Champion of the Parish was really the only, uh, rare in the deck. And, you know, when I, whenever I drew him, he really didn't prove to be all that exciting, you know? Like I said, he didn't add much to the deck because he... I don't know, I frequently ended up having to chump block with him early, or he just sat there and ate removal. <coughs> um, just put my sideboard down for a second so you can look at that. And that's all tokens and some extra basic land. Okay, so sideboard. I snapped up an Orchard Spirit that was going around late. That was pure hate draft. 
Um, some people don't like to hate draft at all. Uh, I've seen some people when they uh, when the pickings are getting slim, they'll ask themselves if you know could I possibly splash for this card and blah 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 blah. I usually don't ask myself that. If there's really nothing spectacular in the pack for the deck I've got going on, I'll just look at the pack and say, hey, what's the best card in here? What can I deprive someone of? Can I deprive someone of a good filler card? And, uh, Orchard Spirit is not a bad filler card at all. Uh, had a Galvanic Juggernaut. Uh, thought about running him. Didn't. Silver Chase Fox. Sideboard card. Ghost Quarter. Didn't run it. Sell off culti a cultist. Didn't want to run him. Stitcher two Stitcher's Apprentices. Um, I could have run those with the sell off occultist and the uh, Galvanic Juggernaut for uh, some really giggly fun, but I chose not to, and I think overall I made the right decision. Uh, makeshift Mauler. Didn't want to run it. Uh, Runic Repetition. I only had like one card with flashback, so there really was no point in running that. Black cards. I had a bunch of black cards in the sideboard. Um, uh, Paraskeletal Grimace, which isn't a bad card for an aura. It gives a enchanted creature plus one, plus one in regen. It's not bad for an aura. It's not nothing to get excited about, mind you, but it's not bad for an aura. <coughs> now, Gruesome Deformities. Uh, enchanted Creature gets Intimidate. whoop de doo um, however, I have seen people taking that card and just, like, tossing it into their draft decks and actually uh, using it to squeak out a win when they otherwise couldn't. I attribute part of that also to the fact that people are starting to get tired of just straight-up drafting in Estrad, and they're at the point where they're like, you know what, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's change things. And, um, I'll admit it's caught me off guard once or twice. It really has. Typhoid Rat, solid filler card. Markov Patrician, it's an okay filler card. A Night Terrors, yeah, it's a filler card. Um, oh, that was an uncommon. You're an uncommon. Yeah, I just talk to myself a little bit here. I do that a lot, I'll admit. Like I said, most of these cards, I'm pretty sure I've got, like, more than a play set of already. Um, prize pull from that foolishness, I picked up uh, a Rooftop Storm, a Heretic's Punishment, uh, Kurin Outlaw slash Terror of Kurin Pass, and a Blasphemous Act. All well and good, right? Uh, second draft. Let me, uh, double check what I got here. Okay, yeah. Alright, second draft weirdness happened during the draft. I was primarily going, like, blue, red, white, and blue with my, with, uh, my draft picks. And I wasn't sure which of the two I was going to favor and maybe use the third as a splash color. And the weirdest thing happened. The weirdest thing happened. Pack two, I hate drafted two screeching bats in a row. Then in pack three, I cracked a bloodline keeper. At that point, I'm like, you know what? Screw it, I'm taking black. Because I already had some red, uh, at least one red, I, I already had two red vampires in pack one. I cracked the, um, what's he called, the, uh, Vulcanrath Marauders, the, uh, three and double red for a 2-2 two -two flying haste whenever it deals damage to a player, gets, uh, two plus two plus two count, plus two, <coughs> brain fart, two plus one plus one counters. So, yeah, you crack your opponent with it once, he takes two, he becomes a 4-4. Four -four. That's some pretty nice stuff right there. That's some pretty nice stuff. But, um... So the Falcon Wrath was my keeper. Um, also in the deck, I had the uh, the Falcon Wrath Marauders, of course. 
Uh, I had a creepy doll in the deck because it's a good, it's a really good blocker. I mean, yeah, it's one one indestructible. Um, when it deals damage to a creature, flip a coin. If you win, destroy that creature. Nice. Um, <coughs> most of the black you see here, I actually picked up in pack three. My first, counting the Falcon Wrath, my first seven picks in black pack three were all black cards because I knew I had to draft black hard because otherwise I wasn't going to be able to support this craziness that came over me. Um, so anyways, I ended up running a, uh, a Forbidden Alchemy, uh, two Silent Despairs, a Stitcher's Apprentice, which I took mostly to go along with the Traitorous Bloods, uh, Nightbird's Clutches, uh, Night Revelers, a Brimstone Volley, Trepanation Blade, a Walking Corpse, a Typhoid Rats, uh, tribute to Hunger, Two Dead Weights, Unburial Rites, The Bloodline Keeper, Two Screeching Bats, A Markov Patrician, A Vampire Interloper, and let me tell you how well this deck didn't do. This deck, um, did not come in first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Actually, no, I think I might have even come in fourth. I can't remember. Um, what happened was I got, um, we had an odd number of players, so I got the bye in round one. And then in uh, round two, I uh, just got my butt talks handed to me by uh, Doug running uh, Kessie Cage Breakers. Oh, let me tell you, that was that was a beaten. He was running, like, if I recall correctly, it was like a blue-green self-mill Kessig Cage Breakers build, and he, he, that hurt. That hurt. I even, uh, Traitor's, uh, dropped Traitor's Blood, stole the Cage Breakers, and swung with it two rounds in a row. Yeah, after I did it once, I top-decked the second one on my next turn. And, uh, let me tell you, I, it wasn't enough. It just plain wasn't enough. Um, another thing is, of course, he also had, uh, he was, he, he was running at least two Gnaw to the Bone in there, the uh, card where you gain two life for each creature in your uh, graveyard, and it's got flashback. Now, normally that's a card that I don't like. Um, life game generally doesn't win games. In fact, it just plain doesn't. But I swear, I must have done enough damage to Doug to, like, kill him twice over or something. And he still had a redonkulous life total at the end of the game. Oh, it was harsh. It was so harsh. Ah, uh, jeez. Sideboard on this Mamma Jamma. I had an Ancient Grudge, an Ashen Mouth, Hound, a uh, Curse of Pierced Heart, uh, two Hysterical Blindnesses, which is funny because after game one with Doug, I uh, sideboarded those in because it's basically a poor man's fog. And I figured I could use that to uh, defend myself from the redonkulous numbers of wolf tokens, but uh, just didn't really help me. Uh, Battleground Geist, uh, Visible Stalker, uh, Delver of Secrets, Frightful Delusion. I, you know, I wanted to run these guys too, but. Uh, I just didn't have enough card slots, and I figured that the Stalker... Eh, I don't know. Yeah, you know, I'm looking at this, and I'm wondering if maybe if I should have done this differently. I don't know. No, I had a Trepanation Blade in there, too. That, that's the, was like the only card I really had that could uh, pump up the uh, Stalker. So, yeah, I mean... Uh, Robbie, uh, a fellow who uh, also plays down the, uh, the shop, was in for second draft. He got his card pool... He looked at his card pool and he's like, this, this is junk. And grabbed his keeper, threw the rest of his stuff into the uh, anti pool, the, the prize pool, and dropped right there before round one, which is why I had to buy. And, um, hey, uh, Robbie, if you're watching this, it did work, man. This did not work. You were right. It, it didn't work. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, you know. Forced to wonder, of course, if it could have worked with this card pool anyway. I don't know. Uh, Ghoul Caller's Bell, Whoopty Doo Yee. I had some. I had a little bit of decent white, but I just. 
you know, it just wasn't coming to me. You know, Thraben Century, Gallows Warden, a rebuke. <coughs> if I wanted to, tr um, by the end of pa by pack three, well, by the end of pack two, I was sitting there go thinking to myself that I wasn't gonna be able to do more than Splash White anyway. Uh, jeez. Uh, I also had a uh, Cackling Counterpart in here. The, um, Blue Spell Flashback <coughs> that creates a token copy of a target creature. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Oh. Whew. Sorry. That, um, anyway, yeah, I had the Cackling Counterpart. I didn't run it. That's another card I wanted to run, but, you know, obviously I didn't. <coughs> Caravan Vigil, I just picked that up at some point, I don't know why. Uh, Cellar Door, just didn't want to run it. Uh, Manor Skeleton, it's a nice little blocker, I didn't main deck him. Ghoul Razor, I didn't want to run him because there's only like one other zombie in the deck. Brain Weevil is, for the most part, just playing bad. Just playing bad. Uh, prize pool, I picked up a uh, Charm Breaker, Devil's Estensia Blood Hall, and a Rooftop Storm. Nothing too exciting. And, uh, there we go. <coughs> then the next day, I, uh, went down for some, uh, standard action, and only one other person showed up, a fellow by the name of Carlos. He's a pretty, seemed like a decent guy. Got no problems with him. And, um, yeah, he got me good uh, with the deck I've been running, or well, trying to run for a while, and I think probably the biggest, pro uh, my biggest problem with the deck is I don't know how to mulligan with it. I'm still way, way too used to, like, you know, the way, the way you mulligan with draft, and the way you mulligan with draft, if you've got a hand with like five lands in it and like two non land cards, you just keep it. <coughs> and uh, that doesn't work in constructed. It really don't. Especially not with the deck I've been running. Speaking of which, uh, I've been looking at some of the uh, spoilers for the next set, and I've seen at least one card that looks really interesting in there. And it's a red common, you know? But whatever. But once again, um, <coughs> for standard action, Shopkeep decided to let us just go ahead and play, and hey look, I have four booster packs out of it, for coming second out of two. <laughs> so I grabbed two packs of Scars and two of new Phyraxia, so once again, totally unopened. So I'm just going to crack these bad boys and, and see what I get. I also, uh, managed to, uh, managed to demonstrate to, uh, young Master Carlos that, uh, land destruction campaign will do nice things in EDH. And, um, he was playing this black control build out of EDH with, uh, Skithrix the White Dragon as his commander. And <coughs> yeah, he, he he could do some interesting things with that. He could do some interesting things with that. But I'm not really seeing anything spectacular in these packs either. Okay, so this one's got at least one nice card in it.
Okay. Um, so out of the uh, scars packs, you know, there's a thrumming bird, a necropene, a uh, corrupted harvester, no big deal. A foil uh, scrap diver, who cares? Uh, black cleave kit clips, not bad. It's not great either. I mean. If you have a red-black weenie aggro deck, uh, it can work. I don't have a red-black weenie aggro deck, but, uh, oh well. These things happen. An orc edgerite trigon of infestation, a throne of geth, and a horse smelter dragon. Yeah, it's alright. Uh, gut shot, an argent mutation, tizzards gambit, and a phyraxian unlife. It's kind of cute. Uh, deceiver eggs are... Uh, Green Hilt Training, which seriously doesn't impress me. An Act of Aggression, eh. And uh, Fresh Meat, which is an interesting little card. Begs to be built around. But yeah, nothing spectacular here. Battery on this thing is almost tapped out. Hopefully I find the charger before next week, right? <laughs> Crud. <coughs> oh, and I also uh, went to Wizards, uh... YouTube channel at to uh, try and hunt up the uh, the little spoiler uh, movie they've got going on for the new set Dark Ascension, and looking at their uh, <coughs> at their uh, channel's homepage, the video it's got a bunch of videos from the 2011 uh, Championships Pro Tour something like that that say they've been out for 42 years, and I'm like, whoa, time travel city, 1.21 gigawatts, kids. 1.21 gigawatts. Alright guys, be good, stay safe, etc, etc.